What's up YouTube, it's your boy the franchise guy. We're coming at you with our final mock draft for the 2021 draft, guys. Uh, the draft is on the 29th, which is a couple days from now. So this is our final pre-draft mock draft. We're going to be using Pro Football Focus yet again, same as last week. And we're going to go do a super serious draft here. We're not going to go for a theme. We're not going to go for a what if. We're going to go for a actual draft. What I think hopefully happens with the Eagles right here. Um, so definitely something I'm looking to uh, I'll take actually serious. Hopefully get a very good draft for the Eagles. We're going to start the draft off. It's going to go Lawrence. Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Sewell, Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddell, Sertain, Trey Lance, Micah Parson, so you know, Christian Barrymore. All right. So the fact that uh, Micah Parson, I'm not super scared of going in division. He's got some zone problems. Christian Barrymore, I think there's a backlog of young defensive talent on that D-line in New York. I'm not super... I don't know. Don't think that's the right pick for the Giants right there. I think they need to go offense, not defense. Um, nothing to complain about. One through three, that makes perfect sense. Sewell going at four. I mean, technically not a real need for them since they do need uh, they need edge, corner, and safety. Going tackle at four, not bad. It protects Matt Ryan for the couple years they have left of him. Uh, Bengals taking Jamar Chase is what the Eagles feared about. But that also got them out of Devontae Smith. Also got them out of Jalen Waddle. Patrick Sertain going down at 8. Not bad for uh, Carolina. Carolina is developing a very scary young core down there. And I think adding Sertain crosses off a big question here. I mean, you can always get quarterback, wide receiver, and tight end later in this draft. It's a very stacked offensive draft, I feel like. Trey Lance going to the Broncos. Makes sense. They have that question. Drew Locke doesn't seem like he's the answer right now. Parsons. I mean, they need defensive back help. You know, um, defensive back help definitely more than linebacker help. Because they do have Lane Van Der Esch. They do have Sean Lee still. So he might be a little backlog, a little stunted. Same with Christian Barrymore. Uh, but I think if you're at 12 and you have the option between Kyle Pitts Ray Sean Slater and Mac Jones. Honestly, you gotta go. You gotta go. Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is the best answer. Ten times out of ten, uh, it gets a big need off of your board right there. Taking a look at who's going. Mac Jones. Mac Jones to the Dolphins. Really? Are they giving up on Tua? Why would they give up on Tua after drafting him? so high last year. See, I tried to turn down randomness so stuff like that didn't happen uh, because there's no there's no reason that the Dolphins draft a quarterback and then they go uh, then they go defensive end right there. Alright, so you're sitting at picks 37. We have Rashad Bateman who's not, that's a very good pick right there. We have Walker Little. Uh, we have Terrence Marshall Another good pickup right there. Asante Samuel Jr. My problem with Asante... As much as I'd love to bring in Asante Samuel Jr., uh, the one problem with this pick is he's a slot corner at best. Slot corner, special teamer, return guy. He's... If he wants to load, yeah. 5'10", you're not putting him on the outside. You can't put him on the outside. You, know, you have about... 50% completion percentage every year, 18 to 38. You know, it's just under 30%, 34, just under 30%, and uh, a little over 30%. Uh, I'm sorry, 50%. So he's allowing, you know, sure, his passer rating has gone down every year. But I just don't think Asante Samuel Jr. has what it takes to be an outside guy, especially if you want to put, move Avante Maddox, who the Eagles have already said they're putting on the inside to play slot. I think, unfortunately, you, as much as you want to bring in uh, the son of legend Asante Samuel Sr., you can't bring in Asante Samuel Jr. to this team. Now, we do have a couple of wide receivers available. We have Rashad Bateman, who could be a very good receiver for the Eagles. We also have Terrace, uh, 
Terrace Marshall Jr. out of LSU. So Minnesota LSU receivers right here. Uh, but we did just draft um, Kyle Pitts, who is going to be that super wide receiver tight end hybrid. Dude's got the t uh, body of a tight end. He's got the hands of a receiver. The best pro comp for him is Rob Gronkowski. And I know there's been a ton of these you know, pro comps, which are super wild, super not accurate. But definitely thinking Gronkowski is the best NFL comparison for him, just due to his size and speed. So I think if you're sitting at 37, you need a linebacker. Zayvon Collins out of Tulsa is going to be your best bet. That doesn't mean don't go wide receiver at another point in this draft. I think it just doesn't mean you invest a second round pick at wide receiver. Now I think a third round pick would be very good for a wide receiver. Even a fourth round pick. Double up on wide receivers and you know rounds four and five. You know, want to go maybe linebacker at this point in the third round, pick 70, maybe want to go corner. You know, Eric Stokes, uh, if he's still available, I think it definitely as a third round pick would be great. Creed Humphrey just went to the, I believe it was Green Bay. Creed Humphrey would be an amazing pickup for an interior offensive line for the Eagles that has a lot of questions going into the future, especially surrounding one Mr. Jason Kelsey, who... A lot of people are saying this will be his final season. Now, I didn't, I didn't predict uh, Malafalu to be here. I think if it's down between Eric Stokes, let's see what your size. I want to compare the sizes real quick. I know size isn't everything for corner because you can have corners who are six foot do better than corners who are six two. Just look at Jalen Mills. Jalen Mills, a safety converted corner. But I think if you have uh, these two right here. Now, I don't think just because, you know, one's ranked 71, ranked 73, I do, you know, talent-wise believe um, Mafalu is better than Eric Stokes. I just love to compare those sizes real quick. I want to see what the sizes on them are. Uh, but we're going to go with corner right here in round number three. So I think maybe rounds four and five, you know, I'll look for a wide receiver. Eric Stokes goes to the Cowboys, so they're getting that cornerback need they have. Dylan Moses goes to the Vikings, replacing Eric Wilson. Sean Way goes to the Dolphins. Another player we could have uh, gone with right there. Now, wide receiver, who's currently available? We have Josh Palmer, Cade Johnson, uh, Darden, Seth Williams at Auburn. All right, Nico Collins at 150 isn't bad but not uh, for 84. So I think you want to maybe wait off that until round uh, four to pick up a wide receiver if this is the talent we have currently available. I mean, Kay Johnson's not bad. Uh, neither is Josh Palmer. Uh, but I think maybe take a look at Edge real quick. I'll take a look at Edge. Um, I'm not seeing anything... Uh, top three guys. I'm only going to stay with top three guys. Just kind of look at who would be available not to overdraft. All right, UCLA, Milton Williams. Nothing, nothing screaming out to me right now from these picks. Linebacker. All right, we got Davis, Justin Hillard, Monty Rice. Um... Hmm. I think maybe since we've gone we've gone offense, we've gone back we've gone back to back defense. I think you want to double up maybe on linebacker. Take Davis out of Kentucky at pick eighty four right now. Now we're gonna wait a whole a whole bunch right here, waiting over thirty picks over I think I'm over thirty five picks, like 36, 37 picks. So I'll take a look at the wide receivers that go off the board. I think it's also a draft where the fifth or sixth round you want to look at drafting a quarterback just as an emergency break glass in case of emergency. Uh, so Schwartz is off the board, which is unfortunate. I do like Schwartz. I think he's the fastest wide receiver in the draft. Definitely would be a guy I wouldn't be against picking up in the fourth round. Nico Collins is off the board now. So it seems like every wide receiver that I'm pretty high on now it's currently left is gone. Tutu Atwell, I'm okay with that one going off the board. 
uh, frankly due to the fact that I believe he's going to be more of a special teamer. Um, I think you want to go Josh Palmer here. Palmer, 6'2". I believe he went with Palmer last time right there. Oh, yes. It's, uh, we're locked in right here. Bottom line. Biggest weakness. Cool. We're locked in. Awesome. Josh Palmer. All right. Taking Josh Palmer right there at pick 123. So we've addressed wide receiver tight end. So I think offensively, offensive weapons should be fine. You, know, you have Rager. Maybe you look for another outside threat later in the draft. Uh, but I think if you want to work on offensive line, uh, linebacker, safety, defense, uh, linebackers, defensive backs, even edge and D-line. I think D-line and edge would be more of a need for next season's draft opposed to this season's draft. Um, Justin Hillard, that would be our third linebacker. Tay Gallen. Take the edge. Um, got Golston. Take a look who's available. At, who's I actually haven't looked at safety. Safety up off. Um, Trey Norwood, Leon O'Neill. No one's no one's screaming draft me currently. Um, I think if you're seeing a position like this, may go with uh, especially if Tay Gowan at UCF is still available. Go with him. Take a take a pick out on him in round five. You have nothing to lose at that pick right there. So I think now that we've addressed corner in two separate occasions, we've got two linebackers. We have two offensive weapons. We have pick 189, 224, 225, 234, 240. I think one more pick after that. Now, it's going to be a, a more of a question on who is currently available. For offensive line, because I don't want to take anyone to offensive line. I think you want to take someone who is going to be a position of need. You know, the Eagles have a lot of problems, such as that interior. You know, Jason Kelsey, they're more or less saying this is going to be his final year. You know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know, the, the Eagles believe it. Everyone who's part of Jason Kelsey's party believes it. We got Banks, uh, Hutcherson, and Manette. David Moore. Now, Eagles do have a problem with tackle. Larry Borum, Cole Van Lannan. Um. Yeah, interior defensive lineman right there. Aaron Banks. I think you want to go guard. You want to go Aaron Banks out of Notre Dame there. Uh, I think, like I always say, Mustafa Johnson at pick 224, 225, if available, is going to be a great get for the Eagles. I think looking on Fletcher Cox could be a cap casualty, uh, could be a camp casualty next season. So I think getting someone who could possibly be a replacement for him I think if Barrymore falls to round two, you know, somehow if he falls to round two, I think that is a must get there, especially for how dominant he can be. Uh, I think if, you know, he's not even a bad pick 12, I prefer not to go defensive tackle at pick 12, but it's going to be a thing where it's like, hey, you know, it's not the worst thing available. Taking a look, not looking to go running back here. I mean, I do like Puka Williams out of Kansas. Uh, it's not who I want to go with, though. We're going to go with Mustafa Johnson over Quinn Bohannon. Then back up, um, Jonathan Cooper out of Ohio State. It's the back-to-back -back defensive line help right there. So we got two picks left on the board. I mean, offensive line. I think, all right. 
Puka Williams still here, pick 234. There you go. Have a dual headed running back core of Miles Sanders and Puka Williams. It's going to be a mean running back room, and it's going to be hard to stop. Plan simple. Makes her pick 240 easy. Go Cole Van Lannon out of Wisconsin to wrap up this draft right here, guys. So I'm going to take a look at the grade, see how we've done, and hopefully, hopefully. The Eagles have some better luck than I did. Hopefully, the Eagles make some pretty good picks. Hopefully, I don't have a better draft class than the Eagles do in real life. Because if I have a better draft than the Eagles, help me, Lord, I'm going to be upset. Uh, pick only a B-plus for Kyle Pitts, the best athlete in this draft. You're kidding me, right? How do you not give that an A-grade? All right. Um, they'll follow me right there to Syracuse, C+. Plus. Jamie David, uh, Jam, uh, Jamin Davis out of Kentucky is a C+. Plus. Palmer Gowan, go B+. Plus. Banks is a C+. Plus. Only a, only a B. Hmm. So definitely, I think, one of the weaker drafts we've done. I think definitely the fact they, for some reason, ranked Kyle Pitts at 12 a uh, B+, plus when he was best available. I guess maybe based off of team need, tight end isn't necessarily a huge team need, so it's giving more preference to team need. Mm, not really what I'm looking for there. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. See who had the best draft. Who had the best draft? It's saying Jacksonville had uh, the best draft right there. Uh, I mean, they got Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Eagles. A half over over a half million drafts right there. Not bad for the Eagles. Average is a uh, B plus. Four results. No, we're not gonna go through all that right there. Uh, but do you think a B rating for this draft is fair for this Eagles team? Do you think the Eagles can draft better than I did? in this year's upcoming draft hopefully not we'll probably have a recap of the draft next sunday next monday uh depending on when the draft wraps up and how it all goes and just give me some time to hopefully not have to cry myself to sleep every night for drafting a second round qb but until next time youtube though peace out rock on stay super classy and have a great day i guess i don't uh i don't know